Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with a cool repair video for you this evening. We are going to work on this Space Invaders and we figured we'd film some of it because people keep asking us for more repair videos. They're interested in how we fix some of this stuff. So I thought I'd show you just kind of a typical game that we get in and some of the issues we run into and how we go about fixing it. So this is a Midway Space Invaders doesn't get too much more cool than that but it's in kind of a little bit rough shape and it doesn't work and there's an issue going on in the back that uh, is kind of interesting so I figured I'd, we figured we'd film a little video and by the way for law enforcement the little poker machine next to it has no game boards or anything in it we were just given that because we know that those are illegal here in South Carolina so that's not that's not a poker machine it just used to be one all right so Here's the Space Invaders, and we've got the back off. Like I said, we haven't done anything to this yet. We're just uh, starting to go through it. We bought this from a nice lady, and she was telling us that she'd been having trouble getting it to work. And she had gone to the uh, she had gone through the trouble of buying a rebuilt power supply that's there on the side. She had swapped out the main motherboard with one that worked. And she had swapped out the monitor with one that worked. So she had done about everything you could do, but she had a problem with the wiring that she couldn't quite figure out. So uh, we looked it over a little bit, and we think we've figured out what's going on. So this connector, this is the this is the main motherboard connector on a Space Invaders, and that connector is a strange connector. I, we don't have it because it's missing from this machine, but. Basically, there's a there's a little white connector that connects to this, and it has little pins inside of it. We can look at this one. See the see the split. Uh, they call those bifurcated, I think, bifurcated pins. Well, the original ones weren't like that. They were they were like a U shaped, almost like a horseshoe shaped pin, where one was on this side and one was on this side, and so it would grip the motherboard on both sides. So like. It's hard to explain, but this pin here would also connect to this pin here with a little U-shaped thing that slid over it like that. So it's similar to this, but not quite the same thing, and it wasn't made anywhere near as well. So those are always screwed up whenever you get one of these, and they kind of lose their tension. This plastic spreads apart a little bit, so it gets to the point where they're not making good contact with that, and then you get all kinds of issues. So apparently that had happened in this game, and then somebody had went through and replaced the connector. So they, uh, they wired in this new one, right? And apparently they had it up and running at one point, or thought they had. But the problem is, uh, we've got this wire here that's not connected because <laughs> it broke off. Well, it, after looking it up and looking on the schematics, it should have went in this top pin, this top hole, which is actually missing ooh, its pins. So they hacked it a little bit, which they had to do. I don't blame them. They hacked it a little bit, but then they, they, they ran into an issue where... I don't know if they just never got it quite right or if the pins fell out, it broke, you know. Um, but one of these wires isn't connected. So I looked it up in the schematics to see what we've got going on. So hold on a second and I'll pull that up and I'll show you what we're working with. All right, so these are the Space Invaders schematics. I don't know how well that'll come out for you, but I think it'll be all right. Pulled these up on the computer and it's basically, you know, showing you the wiring diagram, how everything connects. And so the harness, now the harness uh, that connects into the uh, the little sideboard, all of those are fine. There's uh, two connectors there that are fine. But this main connector that goes in the motherboard is the one that, we've ha that we're having an issue with. So if you look at the bottom, pins one and two, and it says 18-pin uh, connector. Pins one and two are white, and they go over to the power supply, 5 volts. Uh, pin 15 is orange and red. And it's the common, so that's ground, goes over to the power supply. Pin 14 is red, and it's the negative sense from the power supply, which, as you can see here, ties into ground once it's on the motherboard. So basically, you can hook that to ground. Um, black and white is the negative 5, pin 5. Pins 3 and 4 are white and brown, which is 12 volts. Pin 17 at the top there is black, and that goes over to the monitor. 
and then pin 18, which is the top pin, which is the one that's broke on ours, is red and also goes to the monitor. So I don't know if she uh, just couldn't, if that's why she bought another monitor board, she was just trying to get it up and running um, and couldn't figure out why she was getting a signal. So I'm not exactly sure what it was, what it was doing wrong, but um, basically what it comes down to is we need to replace that connector again. So I looked around at what we have and I made a list here. So I just hand wrote out what each wire should connect to, what color it is and what it does, just so I'll know. Just so that, in other words, I had to write, just so you don't go by colors, I also write like what it does, just to make sure that I don't get in a scenario where I'm plugging the white one into the black and white one without thinking about it. With this list, I can look at it and go, oh, wait a minute, that shouldn't be like that. So I just, I just do that to make sure I don't plug something in the wrong spot. So I looked in our parts and we've got this. This is an 18 pin connector. But the problem with it is it's got two connections on each one like we were talking about. So we've it's got it's the same way, but those aren't connected together at all. And they're supposed to be because each side of the board has to connect together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and then we're going to take the top eyelet there and pinch them together. So something like that. So that both sides are together. And then we're going to take the wire and solder it to both of them so that they're both connected to the wire. And that's that. So now the other problem that we had, let me go back over to the game, is that that one, uh, the connector, you have a problem where the connector has a little, they call this the keyhole. So the reason that's there is so that you, 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 don't, you can't put the connector on backwards because basically your grounds are supposed to be up here and all your voltages are supposed to be down here. Well, if you put it on backwards, all your voltages will be up here and your grounds will be down here and it will fry half the chips on the board. So you really have to make sure that doesn't happen. Well, this kind of connector doesn't have a key uh, that you can put down in there. You can see how they approached it. They just put some uh, cardboard in the hole. <laughs> And the reason they did that was so that it, that cardboard would go in that slot to make sure that you put it on just right, you know. Um, since this is the wrong connector for this board, they don't make the original connector, that's why we're going through all this. Since this is the wrong connector for that board, if you don't have that keying thing in there, you could put the, the connector on a little too low, a little too high, and the, you know, you can actually be one whole pin off with this because of the way, see how the slot continues past the last pin? So there's wiggle room on both sides. And see how on the board, as soon as the last pin's over, the board ends. So that means you could you could put it. So it should be like that. But you could put it like that. And it would fit. And then you're <laughs> you'd be sending all the voltages to the wrong pins to fry the board. So since they don't make a key. For this one, what we did was we took the pins that are in that slot and we bent them together and then put a little solder on it. And we tried to do it as clean as we could. So basically now there's a big blob in that hole. So if I try to put this on backwards, for instance, right? Whoop. It won't go, it won't go on there. Now. If you turn it around the right way and put it on there, it'll only go in one place and it goes right on. No wiggle room or nothing. I mean, it fits perfect because we got that little key plug in there. So if we're going to take this, we're going to solder the eyelets together, like I said, so that they're all connected across, the ones that need it. These ones in the middle don't even connect, so we're going to get rid of those, but the ones that need it. And then we're going to take our wires figure this back out and uh, solder them back on here where they go. So we'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll film a video and uh, we'll see what, we, what we've got after we get that wiring straightened out. Okay, so we, uh, we went ahead and replaced that connector like we were talking about. This is the remnants of the old one. You can see they did a pretty good job. But you can see that that one last pin had broken loose and had disappeared so I don't know what happened to it but we took our one that we had and uh, did a very similar thing made sure to keep everything separate so it couldn't touch uh, so the bottom's five 
and this is our 12 this is our negative 5 none of these connect anything even on the board so these are no issue uh, and then all four of these are grounds various grounds including one for the video and then here's the one that was missing on the other one that top one that goes over to the monitor so we have it hooked up now what I did was uh, I took this loose after I did it and uh, tested the uh, voltages on the power supply just to make sure that they hadn't turned any of them way up or anything this is one of the later model ones where you can actually adjust each voltage so it's got a uh, five I believe this is the 12 and I believe this is the negative 5. These two uh, may be reversed, I'm not sure, but I know that's the 5. Um, so I checked that, all the voltages are correct, so now we're going to turn it on and see what we got. And uh, maybe it'll maybe it'll boot up, I don't know. Let me uh, hit the switch and we'll see what we get. It's on. I don't see anything burning up or anything. Let me go around to the front and we'll check it out. Okay, so we turned off the lights and it appears that we have no image at all. The game is not booting. We're just getting a solid white screen. So what I'm going to do first is check the uh, power on the board and then I'm going to uh, test a few things. There, the lucky thing about these older ones is that some of these had a really thorough description in the manual of how to fix it or how it works and Space Invaders does so we're going to have to walk through figuring out what's going on with the board. Um, it could just be the ROMs or it could just be the uh, it's not doing anything it looks like so it could just be that the 8080 chip needs replaced which is the, the CPU chip so uh, I'll, uh, I'll check through a little bit of that stuff. I'm going to check the power first to make sure it's alright. And then I'll try cleaning the ROMs and checking the 8080 chip and swapping it. And uh, if that doesn't fix it, or either way, I'll be back here in a second. So um, we'll do that next and see what happens. Alright folks, so if you have a Space Invaders or any of the 8080 boards that Midway did, so like uh, Sea Wolf, another example, Space Invaders, uh, Tornado Baseball, that kind of stuff, you need to look up this on the internet. Standardized test procedure for Midway's processor boards. Like I said, a lot of these early games, they'll, they'll walk you right through it, so check this out. This was for their, uh, their techs to figure out what in the world's going on. So it has this little flow chart at the beginning. Flow chart of troubleshooting procedure. We have a bad board. So I checked the power supply, everything's fine on the board. Uh, I checked the, uh, I swapped out the 8080, it's the same exact thing, just getting a white white screen. So see it says picture. Uh, yes, we have a picture. And then it says bad picture. Yes, we have a bad picture. And then it says remove prom H. So I did that. And it says vertical lines. Now if you've ever messed with one of these, that's how you basically figure out if it's the ROMs. If you take prom H, which is the first ROM, that it checks. If you take that out, you get this pattern on the screen of uh, of lines like this, and uh, it says vertical. In Space Invaders, the board is mounted vertically, so it's actually horizontal in, in Space Invaders. Uh, I did not get the vertical lines, so no. Go to case B three. So that's where we're going in the uh, manual. So we're going to go fast forward to that. And we'll look through that and see what it says. All right, so I scrolled down to uh, case B3, no vertical lines. And so that's what we got. So it says, this means that the screen has no vertical lines present, just garbage on it. On ours, it doesn't have garbage. It just has an all-white screen. This could be caused for various reasons, and the following procedure should be helpful in most cases. Number one, check the clock driver IC 3245, which is a 4060 chip on some boards. Output pins 2, 7, 10, and 15 which is shown in figure 3.3.3-1. Now I know we're deep in the weeds on this folks, but hey, you guys have been asking for this. <laughs> so there's the C5 chip. This is a copy of the schematics, that figure that they were talking about. And you can see that uh, whoop, this is the inputs to this C5 chip. I have no clue what the chip does. It's some kind of clock output chip, but these are the four lines that come in and these are the four lines that go out. So we need to uh, we need to check that out and see if they're working. Now, if you don't know much about schematics, all of these over here, these four pins are tied together, 
and that's the symbol for ground. And then uh, pin 16 is where it gets its 5 volt, pin 1 is where it gets a 12 volt signal, and pin 5 it also gets a 5 volt. So uh, we will check that and see if those are pulsing uh, with the multimeter. So let me check, I mean the logic probes. Let me, let me set that up and I'll show you how we do that. Be back in a minute. All right, folks, so I've got the game. I've got the PCB board precariously placed on the back of the machine, and I have hooked up my logic probe to it. The way these work is really easy. It's basically going to tell you if the pin on each chip, if it's high or low or going back and forth, pulsing. So the way you, the way you hook it up is you have to hook up the red lead to a 5-volt source, and you have to hook up the black lead to a ground source. So one way you can do it is if, you've, if, they don't, if the board doesn't have an easy way to do that, on a board like this, it's got these ceramic capacitors um, around the outside, and they are hooked, one end's hooked to 5, one, hooked, one end's hooked to ground. It's like a to, to filter, so uh, that's a good place to hook it up. So I've hooked it up, and now the chip we were looking at is chip C5. That's the one that it said to test first, right? Which is the clock chip, or one of the clock chips. So the board will be labeled, so this says C right here, and then 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, row 5. So it's that chip. So the inputs are, it said to check the outputs, but I always check the inputs too just to make sure. So uh, the first one I've got is pin 11. And I hope I won't knock this off of here while I'm doing it. So this is, there's eight pins. The first pin is right there. There's the notch. So pin one's there. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's the third pin right there. All right, so it is pulsing, but it's, a, it's like a high pulse. And pin 14, I don't think I can manipulate this to where you can see it, or maybe you can. 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, see how it's red? and green that's a pulse so we're getting a signal coming in and then pin six it's a pulse and pin three it's a pulse okay so uh, the output pins are 10 15 7 and 2 so pin 10 get to it that cap is right in the way pin 10 come on baby Okay, pin 10 is low, so it's not outputting a pulse like it's getting in. It's stuck low. So pin 10 is low. I'm marking it on my piece of paper I've got here. Pin 15. Whoop. Pin 15 also low. Pin 7. Also low. And pin two. Also low. So three is pulsing. Six is pulsing. Okay, yeah. All right, so all the pins going in are pulsing. All the pins going out are low. So it very well could be that, that chip isn't working right. Um, it's possible that the chips on the other side of that aren't working right, but we'll go look at the schematics and see if we, if it looks like logically that's the problem. Be right back. All right, folks, so we put the chip in. I actually had one of those, but it was used. A 3245 chip, which apparently is some real rare stuff that's hard to get anymore. So I had to use one. I, put, I took the old one out, put a socket in it, and we'll test it out and see what happens. Now, I've still got that chip out, so we're trying to get the lines on the screen. And we do have lines on the screen, but believe it or not, those are not the correct lines that are supposed to be on the screen. See how they're evenly spaced? They're not supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be like a little thin one underneath that, and then a blank, and then that bigger line. 
So they're they're there, but they're a little off. What that means whenever you're, they're off a little bit is that you've got RAM problems. So what I'm going to do is I've got an actual RAM test chip that I'm going to install. So I'm going to pop that in, and I'll show you how that works here in a second, and we'll uh, we'll see where we go from there. But this is what this means now is that the clock's running and the CPU's running, but it's not executing code because we took the ROM chip out. Um, but the RAM have an issue because they're not, it's not displaying the lines the way it's supposed to be. So, um, I'll be right back. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that RAM. All right, chip. folks. So we're on to our next thing. So what we did was we took the, um, uh, we have another actual board set. And so we took the, this is actually called the motherboard, believe it or not. The big one's not the motherboard. The little one is, I don't know why that's just what they did. Um, but the motherboard, we took it off and swapped it into the uh, game a different one and got the same set of lines uh, so usually what that means if the lines aren't perfect it's because one of your RAMs messed up or one of the signals to the RAM we checked that we couldn't find anything so we we uh, there's an actual you can burn a ROM chip that is a Space Invaders RAM test chip so we burned that and installed it and we're getting this now in the middle of it right there that is supposed to give you a number that tells you what RAM is bad. But the RAM is so bad <laughs> that it can't properly display the number, which is bad because that means now we're just going to have to basically shotgun it and start replacing RAM willy-nilly trying to figure out which one is bad. There's also a test in the uh, in the uh, uh, if, if you take out the ROMs and there's a test in the manual that shows you uh, to you know ground pin seven of each RAM and that it will uh, put dots up on the screen and if you see dots then on that RAM then you replace that RAM until you get a solid line. Well, all of the RAM gave me a solid line, but it's somehow not able to display the proper um, uh, number or letter showing us which one's bad. So. There, you can see the remnants of the letter, but I don't know if that's proper or not. So there's a dot, and then over on the side, on the right side, there, there are two dots. So that's probably not a zero, and it's probably not a three. Um, it might it might be a two <laughs> or a seven uh, or an A. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell which one it's trying to tell me is not working properly. So I think what we're going to do first is we're going to replace maybe the first two RAM. Um, and then try it again and see if that cleans it up a little bit where it'll at least give us uh, something we can read to tell us which RAM is failing. It could possibly be some of the some of the uh, logic that controls the RAM or that it interprets the RAM or whatever but I hope not because if it is then um, we would replace a whole bunch of RAM for no good reason. But the RAM are always bad on these. I mean, every time you get one, some of the RAM chips are bad. So logic would dictate that we do have some bad RAM chips. And I've seen this before with this RAM test chip where it'll give you like just some garbled uh, response like, like this one's doing. And you have to replace a couple and then it'll clean up and you can actually read the, the RAM number. So I'm going to replace a couple of the RAM chips first. Uh, there are 2101 chips on the, on the motherboard. I'm going to replace a couple of those first, and then we'll try it again and see if it changes any. Okay, folks, so this is our other motherboard, the other one I put back in the game, but uh, these are the RAM, and they're actually 2107s. I said 2101. They're 2107s, um, or an alternate. Um, so these RAM here, there's two banks, and whenever you put in that test thing, it, t it tests the RAM. So since we're having an issue where we can't tell which RAM it is, I replaced the first one because I thought... You know, it, it, it seems like it's not even getting far along in the test to give you the right number. So I replaced the first RAM, and then I took this one out. Um, I think these banks work in pairs, but I took this one out because that way, this is RAM 1 in, in the test. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then it does A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So I figured if the problem was one of these up here, um, it would stop at this one. You know what I mean? because since A is gone, it should stop at A. If it does them in that order, I don't know. So I replaced one, and I took out A. So we should be getting an A error, because A is not even in there. So we put it back in, and we are getting 
kind of hard to read them because they're using the way that it was set up before. And remember, it's on a mirror. So that is a 7. So it's telling me that RAM 7 is bad. And it's cleared up enough that, you know, you can actually read it now. So it's saying RAM 7. And I think if you look at the, uh, look at the lines in the test pattern, they look different, right? They're a little more even now. So it's getting there. So it's telling me RAM 7 is bad, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's going to be this one on the board in the machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the A RAM as well. So I should get 7. Uh, apparently 1 was bad, you know, uh, because it, it, it cleared up after that. So I need to replace 7, which is telling me now, and I've got A out of it, so I'm going to put A. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and put a new one in. I'm going to put a new A in. And then when we do the test, it'll either tell us 8 is bad, which would be the next one, or it will tell us B is bad, or one of these, or it'll come up in, in the test mode. So we shall see. So I'll replace those two, and then we'll see where we get from there. All right, folks, so I replaced those like we were talking about, and now I am getting what appears to be most of a 4. So either it doesn't check them in order, like we were thinking, or I'm just chasing my tail here. But since I'm still getting different numbers, and that does look like a 4 to me, I'm going to replace RAM 4. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I, uh, I'll replace that one and be back in a minute. All right, so now we're getting garbage. After my latest one, after I replaced four, we're getting junk. So I'm gonna t I'm gonna just pop four out and see if it gives us a four error again, which it should, because um, we turned it off once or twice and it still said four. So I'm gonna take four back out and see if it still says four. And if it does, then I know that uh, you know I'm checking my work, make sure everything was all right, and uh, then I'll probably try swapping like the second one, just to move on. Um, since I already did the first one <laughs> and we'll, we'll see what happens. Be right. All right. So that was, I, uh, I just went back and looked at the number four that I had replaced and there was, I had screwed up a trace. So I repaired the trace and now we're getting a B or it appears to be a B. Not sure. Believe that's a B. I don't think it's a three. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review the video that I shot a second ago where it was showing me a 4. And I think it was facing the same way, so I don't know. So I'm going to check it out, and I'm going to replace either B or 3 after I look at that video. So be back when I do that. All right, so I started looking at the old tape, and basically it was backwards. So it couldn't have been a B, and it couldn't have been a 3. So then I started thinking, well, maybe it was an 8, even though it, you know it was flat on one side. So it looked like a misformed 8, so I, tr I changed 8. And now we have got F. <laughs> so I discovered by looking at the tape that this is the bottom here. So it's displaying an F uh, the proper way. So F. So we'll do F now. Now if this seems strange that we're getting so many of them, it's not. You got to remember this thing's from 1978. If you do a Space Invaders or any of the 8080 boards, so like Seawolf, etc., you're going to get a whole ton of RAM that are bad. It may very well go through and tell me every freaking one of them is bad. Uh, hopefully not, but so far we're up to what five or six. So uh, we're going to do F now and see what happens there. Also, it seems to me like it doesn't it doesn't test them in order. Uh, people that know more about how the board works could probably tell you what order it would test them in, but it's it doesn't do one two three four five six seven eight A B C D E F G H. Um, so that you can't go by that order because now we're on F. So. <laughs> We'll replace F and see what happens. Be back after that. All right, we replaced F, and now we're getting H, <laughs> which is the last uh, RAM on the board. Now, again, I don't know if that does them in order, but it is the last RAM. And I'm wondering if that's why one line is missing from the back, you know? So I don't know. So next up, H. Here we come. All right, folks, we fixed it. So on this test ROM, it goes through and it checks the RAM. It's kind of hard to see it because of the mirror. So 
watch it's going to reset and then it's going to check the RAM and you can see what it was doing all that time there's the lines it was trying to draw all right it says it says okay all RAMs and so now it's checking all of the sounds so it's invader 2 invader 3 invader 4 the UFO sound. That video R, I think, means video reverse. It's for the cocktail. UFO, the missile, launch, whatever that means, invader, extra man. The LAU is not launch. It's uh, whatever. But anyway, you get the point. So all of them are working. It says all my ROMs are good. It says all my RAMs are good. Or all my RAMs are good. It's not checking the ROMs because I don't even have all of them in there. And then the port test is the buttons, too. So if you see the... Where it says port one and two. You can see that's working. That's working. That's working. That's working. So all my buttons are working. I think it might do the coin switch too. Yeah, there's the coin switch. Both coin switches are working. So there we go. We fixed the we fixed the board and all the sounds were working, so you don't get to see me try to chase down all of the bad sounds that usually these have. But that's that. Now, if you like videos like this, so basically, uh, oh, you know what, though? I'm not going to cut it off yet because I need to show you that it boots up with the ROMs in it. So I'm going to try put, taking out my test ROM and putting in the actual game ROMs, and we'll see if it boots up. But uh, we'll check that out. Be back in just a second. All right, folks. So there it is. It is up and running. So I took out my RAM test chip, and I put the ROM back in, and bam, it booted right up. So there you go. I still need to adjust the green a little bit. Oops, sorry. Need to adjust the green. If I if I move the monitor up a little bit, it'll make all that line up how it should be. But it's up and playing, so you got to see us uh, bring one back from the dead. Couldn't have done it without you, folks. Now, I've still got more stuff to do to this cabinet, of course, but it is up and running. Um, so now we got to start with a lot of the cosmetic stuff and getting the lights working and all that. Now, if you enjoy videos like this, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Every time we get something in uh, that's a little different, we'll film a little video of it. We do a lot of videos showing off games after we get them done and just showing uh, how cool they are. Um, we've already got a video showing a Space Invaders uh, all the way redone and working, so you can check that out on our website, I mean on our uh, channel here. Uh, and make sure to subscribe to us, give us your comments below, let us know what you think about this, and we will see you on that next video.